everyone and welcome back to another episode of Animation Pilgrimage where Sean and I rewatch every animated film in chronological order. Every theatrically released animated film in chronological order. <laughs> I digress! I'm Tennille. And I'm Sean. And today we watched Rudiger, a 1967, yes. that's the year we're in, 1967. Uh, animated film from the UK and from Hallison Bachelor, who last time I guessed, uh, or, or I felt like I remembered that they were the ones who made Animal Farm, and I was correct. Okay. Also, I don't think that's how it's pronounced. What? Rudiger? I feel like that's an American way of pronouncing it, but every single time it's pronounced in this movie, it's pronounced in a, a different way, and I... I've already forgotten, but I know it's different. Like, the end of the the word is different. It's like... Is it like... Rudigry? Rudigry? Or diggery? That's not right. But whatever it is, is it's, it's pronounced differently, and I'm sure you can find instances of this movie where it's said in a different way. I'm just gonna say Rudiger. Yeah, that sounds That's what makes easy. sense to me. Okay. And I don't remember how they said it, so this film is now Rudiger. Okay. <laughs> it's a musical! It is a musical! It's an opera! It's an opera! Not just any kind of musical, but a full-on opera. And apparently based on a Gilbert and Sullivan opera. Okay. Um... If you don't know who Gilbert and Sullivan are, they're famous opera creating people. <laughs> what else have they done? Are they, did they do the Pirates of Penzance? Yes. Okay. I yeah. say with utmost confidence as though I know what an opera is. <laughs> I am the very model of a modern major general. Yes, that is like the one thing I know. Okay. And I only know it because of VeggieTales. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, a real cultured person right here. I actually once saw a performance of the Pirates of Penzance. Oh, yeah? It was a college that did it, and our, our my high school class went to see it for some reason. Huh. Yeah. There's a weird set of circumstances there. Mm -hmm. That doesn't normally happen, but it happened. Did you like it? It was amusing. Um, I think the part I like about these operas is always the segments where the singers are just throwing out lines like it's no one's business and it like like how are you saying this many words in a second oh are they just like go on a breakdown essentially mm -hmm. yeah like mm. I am the very model of a modern major general. I have a lot of facts concerning vegetable and mineral. <laughs> Categorical. Categorical. That kind of thing. I love those segments of these kinds of uh, performances. Where you just kind of have to try and keep up with what they're saying. And just like, You're uh -huh. just on the edge of your seat like, oh my god, there's more words. <laughs> there's a section in this movie that does the same thing. Uh-huh. Actually, I think there's... There's one for sure, and there's another section earlier in the movie that almost gets there. Yeah. But, wow, that, it, it, like, I love those segments. Okay, before we go on too much of a tangent, I just want to say, this movie was a delight. Oh my gosh, yes. This is this the kind of... This was so much fun. This is the kind of movie I hope to always run across in Animation Pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. is like these films we've never heard of, nobody ever talks about, but they're just an absolute delight. It's so charming. Yeah. It's like, obviously the budget was like $15, but the people that worked on it loved this movie and loved working on this project. Well, and you and can like, tell. And like the source material is fun. Yes. And like this is very obviously a... Um, they recorded a live performance and yes. then just animated to it. Yeah. Because you can tell that they're all on a sound stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did my bit of research, of course, mm -hmm. and I found that it's a abridged version of the opera, which, you know... Of course they would have to do Of course it's version. an abridged version. I don't think anyone would sit through two hours of this. Yeah, no. 
Um, it's charming, it's not that charming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Redigroy. Redigroy? Groy? Yeah, I feel like they pronounce it like a groy. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I don't know why that suddenly jumped into my head. Anyways. Yeah, but the animation in this is great. Mm -hmm. I I love all the character designs and looking at the um, at some of the like promotional material for the opera itself. Cause, okay. Because like these were popular operas back in like the late eighteen hundreds. Okay. Just to give you a time frame, um, and so like there's like art of the characters. It's just like drawn. And I can see the resemblance to what they the animated movie? characters. Yeah, like, ah, that's like great. the um, Robin, the fake, the, the older brother, wearing like the top hat and being like very like fine-faced and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. that's in that promotional material too. <laughs> and um, The quote-unquote main character. Yeah, and the... Uh, the brother, Richard. Yeah, the foster brother, Richard, is... Is not the animated film makes him look more like a a sailor man dude, bro. A Navy SEAL kind of guy, whereas in the promotional material he's got like dark hair and a beard, but like it's the same kind of body type. Yeah. Uh, and then Rose, of course, is just like, oh, I'm a lady. I'm a lady. I'm a pretty lady. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to go on a uh, plot synopsis now? Yeah, because I'm guessing most of our audience is Has not going no to be familiar idea. with the opera or this movie. Because as far as I can tell, this movie is like almost dead to the world. Yeah. Which is a real shame, because like we've been saying, it's a delight. All right. Plot so, synopsis. So, way back a long time ago, there is one... Baron? A Baron named Rudiger. Are we going to call him Rudiger or Rudiger? Rudiger, just stick to Rudiger. Okay, we're going to say Rudiger. We know it's not the correct pronunciation. Yeah. A Baron Rudiger uh, was burning witches because that's what she did back in the day. Mm -hmm. Well, one of these witches cast... And he really liked burning witches. Yeah, he really liked it. Uh, anyways, uh, one witch is like, all right, I'm casting a curse on you that you have to do an illegal thing every day or you will die in a painful way you'll be like tortured tortured to death yeah by Which magic is an odd curse yeah it's a very odd curse like what a premise and my immediate thought is like okay but if you're a baron can't you just make some easy concept illegal just because and then you will be forced to do it every day like I don't know, eating breakfast before noon is illegal. Oh look, I'm eating breakfast before noon, I did my illegal thing for the day, and then you could be a good guy. Yeah. But no, all these guys are like, oh no, I have to be a terrible person. I have to go murder someone. <laughs> ah, and things like that. Uh -huh. And this is being passed down the line, and it's a curse that keeps going for like I'm also generations. wondering how these people reproduce. Yeah. Like, like, how does a baby commit a crime every day? Well, no, no, no. Oh, you don't do have to commit a crime. Until you become the Baron. The Baron. The yeah, Baron is the only one that has to do it. You actually get the name passed down to you. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, an older brother, like, there's two brothers, and the older brother's like, you know what, this sounds horrible, so I'm I going, don't want to inherit this. I don't want to inher inherit this, so he fakes his own death before he would have to take the place of the Baron. Mm-hmm. And then he goes and lives in a different, or lives in the town at the base of the castle. Yeah. Like an idiot, you should go a lot farther away. Mm -hmm. But he's like, uh, Oak Apple? Robin. His name, he... Robin Oakapple. Yeah. It, like, he takes the last name Oakapple instead of Rudiger. Mm -hmm. um, so his younger brother has to take over, and this guy is miserable. Because, yeah. of course he is. He has to be bad guy. Yeah. Um, either way, the, the actual plot starts with Robin being like, Oh, I love this girl. And the girl's like, Oh, I love this man. And how, what would they do? But they're both too shy to, like... 
uh, actually do ask, anything. Actually ask each other out. So, so they like, sing a song about what the other person should do. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, I have a friend who like really likes this girl. And she's like, oh, I have this girlfriend who really likes this guy. And they sing a song about it. About how they should totally like hook up and stuff, but then they don't because they don't real. They're either idiots or they're too shy or both to realize that they're talking about themselves right there in that situation right uh -huh. here and there. But the animation has a lot of like really cute moments where it's like the guy goes to like grab her hand and like oh no, but she I but she like turns away and so he's like oh no, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, I can't do this. Oh. <laughs> uh, and so she goes along her merry way, and then. Uh, Richard, who is very Richard the Chad shows up. Richard the Chad, uh, who is very often referred Actually, to I as think Dick. I think his last name, or or he's referred to as like Richard the Dauntless. Dauntless. Okay, but he's very often referred to as Dick because you know Richard, Richard does, as Richard do. <laughs> and Richard is definitely a dick. A dick in this movie. Uh huh. <laughs> uh. Either way, he's a sailor man, he comes home and he's like, he's a Chad dude bro, and he just like, makes out with any girl he sees. Uh-huh. And so Robin's like, I'm having women troubles and I need your help to go talk to the girl so that I can, like, you can get, tell her that I love her. And, and Richard's like, yeah bro, anything I got this. for anything for my, for my bro. And, and then, he goes and he's like, hey, so I hooked up with her. We're getting married. And Robin's like, what? No, that's what not the how, hell, dude? That's not how this is supposed to go. Uh, and then he confesses his love, and the girl's like, cool, okay, I'll go with you then. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Richard is like, no, this girl that I just met that I totally want to love and marry for the rest of my life. Uh -huh. And, like, you can tell he's a player because, like, on his arm he's got a tattoo that's like love, and it's got like seven names around it. Yeah, it's like they're crossed out. They're not actually crossed out, but they're like he just keeps adding more names. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Robin and the girl go off to get married, and the brother comes, the brother Baron comes down from his castle, and he's like, oh, I'm miserable and evil and stuff, and everyone's like, oh, he's miserable and evil and stuff. Don't forget about another character. Mad Margaret. Oh, yeah, she exists. Yeah, I don't understand this character, but apparently she's part of the original opera, too. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay. There's a crazy I mean, lady. Maybe this makes more sense in the full opera, mm -hmm. but... She doesn't really do much here. Yeah. There's this crazy lady, and she's crazy, and she, like, plays in the cemetery and throws, like, death flowers everywhere, and... She's... Crazy, cause she's in love with the younger Baron brother, but okay. also she's just crazy. Yeah, it, I don't know. I like her hair color. Yeah, like, it's like this crazy multicolored. Well, and like thing. the character design's interesting, cause she's got like the very small pupils and very wide eyes, and like it's played for comedy well. Um, a few times really well in the second act, I think. Mm -hmm. But in the first act, you're just kind of like, what Why are you here? What's going on? Uh huh. Either way, the. She also goes up to. <laughs> she has some sick burns, yo. She also goes up to Rose and she's like, Oh, I thought I heard you were beautiful. And Rose is like, What? <laughs> Girl! <laughs> Bonch, did you just. <laughs> I'm here to play a prank on Rose. And it's like, well, I'm Rose. It's like, oh, I was told she was beautiful. Yeah. Or something to that extent. And it's like, oh, snap. <laughs> also, this prank never happens. So no. I, I don't really get it. I don't either. But either way. Either, either way. Richard is butt hurt and goes to the Baron. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, guess what? You shouldn't be the Baron because your older brother is actually still alive. And he's here in this town. He's about to get married. And the brother's like, what? <laughs> This isn't cool! So they crash the wedding. They crash the wedding. And he's like, you should be the Baron, and I should be a good guy, and you should be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And Robin's like, well, let me take this awesome power stance. 
I don't know. I just love he's like crossing his arms off to the side, mm-hmm. but like not to his chest, but like out. And he's just got like this defiant, like powerful stance with his legs. Yeah. And he's defending himself, but because this is still an old movie, we honestly can't hear, like, understand all the words that they say all the time. Okay. I'll be real here. <laughs> I didn't understand half the words this movie was saying, but it was still a joy to listen to. <laughs> yes. Because, again, they're recorded on a sound stage, uh-huh. so the audio fidelity is not going to be great to begin with. Yeah. And this movie is, like... Still 50 years 50 old. 50 years old. Oh, wow. If not more. Yeah, we're still 50 years behind. Yeah, I know. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my god. There's still a lot of animation pilgrimage to go, baby. Holy crap. Alright, anyways. He's like, I'm defending myself. And then, uh, he's like, nope, you're gonna be the Baron and stuff. And I'm sure this all would be much more thrilling if Sean and I could understand what they were saying. But <laughs> Either way, Ro- Rose is like, you're a bad guy. Well, I can't love you. I'm going to go love the Baron. And the Baron's like, uh, no. I don't love you. And then this is where the crazy lady comes out. Like, no, I love the Baron. And the Baron's like, yeah, yeah. okay, I'll go with her. Uh, and so Rose is like, uh, Richard, I love you. And Richard's like, cool. Yeah, cool. I like this. Doesn't even care that he plays like third fiddle here. He's just like, sweet. Yeah. I got the girl. Uh huh. Yes. I love Richard. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. Uh My two brain cells got this plan to work. Holy cow. Two? He has a whole two to rub together? I know. (laughs) Wow. Um, Either way, Robin is like, well, I guess I have to go live in the castle and be the evil baron. I guess this is my fate now. And he literally transforms. Like, he's going up the stairs and there's a boom, evil cape. And then, boom, his face gets all, like, long nose and stupid hair. The evil cape was a power move and I was here for it. I was like, yeah, go Robin! And then he transformed and like, oh, well. Oh, I guess being evil just curses you with looking horrible. Yeah. Because as it turns out, his brother, who also looked horrible, now looks, now nice. looks like a regular Nicer. guy. Yeah. But either way, he's like, all right, I guess I have to do evil things. Good thing my hand manservant is here to help me with all of my evil deeds. He has an Alfred. <laughs> and, it's true. And he constantly keeps trying to cheat his curse by making Alfred do the bad thing for him. Yes. I love it. <laughs> do and this Al- thing for me. And, and Alfred's, Alfred's like, just uh, okay. like, oh, young master, I love you. So I'll do so it I'll for do you. So I'll do it for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's really funny. Um, he is visited by... Nine ghosts? Uh, no, this is before the ghosts. Oh, okay. Spoilers! <laughs> Richard and Rose come to visit him. Yes. And Richard is like, you can't do anything illegal to Rose because I have a powerful flag here. <laughs> and you can't do anything illegal underneath this flag. And it's, it's the just, British flag. This is the British flag. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and Robin's like, the Union Jack. Curses, foils. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be the same thing if someone did that, like, if some army guy did that with an American flag. And she's and like, like, curses. Curses, foil. I can't do anything under the gaze of the American flag. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this concept. <laughs> so stupid. I love it. Uh, either way, they try to convince him that he doesn't have to be evil, and he's like, no, you don't understand, I'll die if I don't be evil. Mm-hmm. And now he's visited by, like, seven ghosts of his ancestors, and they taunt and torment him for a bit, and then they're like, all right, what are the evil things you did? And you have to tell us to see if you're actually being evil enough. 
And he's like, I wrote an illegal tax, uh, or like an incorrect tax write-off. And they're like, everyone does that. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> and like everything he does is like, that doesn't work. He's like, I wrote my son out of my will. It's like, you, you don't, don't even have, have a son. son. So he's still written out of my will. <laughs> like, yeah. Because he's, tr like, Robin's trying to not do actually evil things. Uh-huh. But either way, it's like, all right, you need to do something truly evil. Like, you need to carry off a lady from the town. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to kill you. Like, we're going to kill you? The curse? The, the I, curse? I don't really understand. It's real muddy. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So he's like, oh, no, Alfred, go find a random go lady. Go kidnap a lady. Go kidnap a lady. He's like, what lady? I don't care. <laughs> Just get someone for me. <laughs> and then he is. Y'all, okay, we need to take a break here. Okay. And just remind y'all, this movie is a delight. <laughs> this movie is hilarious, and I love it. <laughs> this reminds me that, you know what, musicals and plays can actually be fun sometimes. Yeah, they can be. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 bleh. You got sick of them. I got really sick of them in mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. Just like too much. Yeah. Too much of this. Yeah. Either way, he is then visited by his brother and his mad wife who's trying to not be mad. And if they say a specific word, she comes to her senses. And this mm -hmm. is played as a joke. Yeah. Again, this play was written in the late 1800s. Uh-huh. Mental illness is either a reason to make someone a villain or It's a... just a joke because yeah, they're a crazy a person. So, so, you know, like, it's pretty... not cool nowadays, but... <sighs> it's like not a lot we could do about it, so yeah. we can choose to laugh at it or just feel really bad about it. And I'm going to choose to laugh when it's actually funny. Yeah. And it's kind of maybe it's a little bit. amusing enough. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I'll just keep it at amusing enough. I'm sure this character did something else more. I hope this character did something else more in the original opera. But I, I'm, I'm at a loss for why this character is in this movie. Yeah. But either way, this, this is the point mm -hmm. where Robin the crazy lady and the brother sing very quickly. Yes. And they're singing about how it doesn't really matter and it doesn't really matter, 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 matter. And they all get like their own uh, verse. verse. And I wish I could tell you what this song was about. Yeah. It... <laughs> but it's too fast. So... And the audio quality doesn't Something help. Something about it not mattering. <laughs> all I know is like Something about Robin doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. And then I don't remember what the brother was talking about. I don't know. But either way, they're trying to convince him that he doesn't have to be evil but again. Yeah. But he's like, you know what? Fine. Even if I die, I don't want to be evil. Yeah. And he's like, cool. And at this time is when Alfred comes back with a lady. A lady? Who... We forgot to complete. We for, completely forgot to mention this lady earlier, but like Rose lives with this older lady. This I older don't know. lady who like takes care of all these girls, and they're like a, a choir? choir. Yeah, there's just a choir of ladies, and I love their movement because like they just move as a unit. They just always. move as a unit all the time, and they're like their their dresses it's like flow. flow and stuff, and it's. It's beautiful the animation. animation. Yes. Yeah, the animation in this movie is lovely. Mm -hmm. I I really enjoy it. Oh, uh, it's so much it fun. It has its moments. Either way, this is like an old matron lady. And yeah. she's like, oh, what do you want with me? And Alf er, uh, Robin's like, I didn't want any of this. I'm trying to be good now. I forgot I even sent him out there to get you. <laughs> Grab for uncle, help. Yeah, and he calls the ghosts. Of but his we uncle. We haven't really talked about the ghosts. I mean, we, we skipped the, over it. Well, we, like, talked about how they haunted them, but, like... Yeah, the, the, the ghosts, like, sang a song, and they're talking about haunting him, and... Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. couldn't understand a word they said, because there's, like, an echo effect on them, yeah. and then they're singing, and there's music, <laughs> and the audio quality is bad, and uh -huh. I was like, 
I have no idea what you guys are saying at all. <laughs> but I get it. You're haunting him. Yes. Cool. Got it. Anyways, the uncle's like, what are you doing? What are you doing with this woman? This is my girl. This is the girl I loved when I was alive. And it's like, uh -huh. well, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> uh, and then they're like, whoa, you're dead, but you're a ghost, and I can see you, and they're like hugging, and it's weird. Well, okay, so yeah, they reunite, and then Uncle gives his backstory, and he's like, I was so distraught over the curse, I committed a suicide. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh. Oh, I Uncle, got it. But that's technically illegal, so you're <laughs> actually still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and it like yeah Robin gives the thought process like I figured out how to defeat the curse like if you uh, don't commit a crime every day you'll die which is tantamount to suicide and seeing as suicide is illegal you best not have died at all and the uncle's like well I I guess uh, you're right I, and then I feel alive. like I've, I'm alive again and then he's alive again and it and was like curse hooray over. And the curse is done. Because they beat the curse uh -huh. by not doing anything. Because that's suicide, which means it's illegal, which means they live, which means they die, which means they're fine, which means the curse is gone. Yeah. And I was like, I love this. It's like, you know what? I love old movies and their weird circular logic, and I love how it works. <laughs> so the witch is defeated. Uh, the... The uncle is alive, all the other older ancestors fly off, and they actually take the witch's ghost as well, and they're just like, wee, let's go off and party in afterlife or whatever. Yeah. And everyone, uh, uh, so Rose runs back to Robin like, I love you again. <laughs> so we got the uncle and his girl, Robin and Rose, uh, the brother and the crazy lady, and, and then, then Richard... Richard and all of the chorus girls. And all of the chorus girls. <laughs> and he's like, eh, whatever. What? I don't care. It's cool. <laughs> oh, this is a really dumb movie. I love it. And I it. love it. I love it. And, okay. And that's how the movie ends. So a little bit more on this one. So I definitely feel like, uh, since this was a Gilbert and Sullivan opera, Mm -hmm. Usually you'd go like Gilbert and Sullivan's Rudiger. So mm -hmm. I don't really feel like the animation studio here was trying to parody that a bit by doing Hallis and Bachelor's Rudiger. Rudiger. Okay. Which is why it's called Hallis and Bachelor's Rudiger. If you want to look up this movie, you're going to have to look it up by that name specifically, because otherwise I don't think you're going to find it. Yeah, and also probably put in the date of 1967. Otherwise, you're not going to find it. Yeah. Um, they, uh, the source I found for information on this movie, like, I, I don't know how accurate it is, because it's not, like, a source I can really check. Mm -hmm. But, I have to go with what I have here. So, hopefully this is mostly accurate. Probably. Hopefully this is mostly accurate, but take all of this with a grain of salt. Um, it said that apparently they wanted to get a, a bigger opera to do, because Rediger wasn't a very popular opera. It was a pretty, like, kind of middling reviewed, very, very mixed reviewed show, and it had a very poor opening. Okay. Um, when it first came out. Um, in general, it's not remembered fondly like a lot of other Gilbert and Sullivan operas. Okay. Um, but this was the only one they were able to get their hands on copyright-wise. So they went hand with it. Because the the opera company that like owned the rights to it was like, had a fist clench. On stuff, so they were like only giving them Rudiger because Rudiger isn't a very popular opera. Yeah. And then on top of that, when the movie did actually release, the copyright stuff was still kind of like in, iffy. In the muddled? Yeah, like it's kind of implied that they gave them copyright to show it in theaters for a bit and in like. And then it got put on, broadcast on TV in the UK and in America for a little bit. 
And then, like, that was it. Oh, wow. And then there was, like, a home, a video home release in the UK in 1987, but that's also it. Wow. Which is too bad, because I think this is a really neat little film. It's no masterpiece by any means, but, like, this it was, was charming a lot. as hell. It was charming as hell. It was a lot of fun. The animation has its moments where mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, that's clever, and mm -hmm. I really like that. Every character prances everywhere they go, uh -huh. and I'm just gonna let you know, prancing in time with music is a lot more hard, a lot more difficult to animate than someone just, I don't know, walking. Mm -hmm. And so, like, all of, like, everyone's movement is very impressive in that standard. Uh... The character designs are great. Yes, they're so good. Like, every character is very distinct and different, mm -hmm. and I love that. Yeah. The music's fun, even if we can't understand <laughs> <laughs> I highly suggest checking this one out. This, yeah. This movie is, like, the best movie we've seen in the second half of, uh... This movie's the best movie we've seen in a while. Like, the only other one that comes close, or, uh, like, the only other one that, like, is like, yes, this was a good movie, was The Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. But, like, everything else in the second half of the 60s here is like, I don't know, I don't think anyone should really necessarily watch any of these if they don't want to. Yeah. But, like, no, this is this was a fun one. This was a fun one and deserves way more recognition than it has. Ah, breath of fresh air. Yeah, <laughs> a, a literal breath of fresh air. Okay. <sighs> Anything else? I think that's it. Okay, so join us back here next time as we watch Mr. and Mrs. Cabal's Theater. I have no idea what this is. Nope. Join us then. My eyes are fully open to my awful situation. I should go at once to Roderick and make him a narration. I shall tell him I've recovered my forgotten model senses and I don't get up and save any for any consequences. Now I do not want to perish by the sword or by the dagger, but the martyr may indulge a little pardonable swagger. A word or two of common and a man into a but I've got to die tomorrow, so it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter.